over and, and clear my head and just kind of see what's going on with everything. It's really tough to get to this point, and that makes the finality of it all kind of hit you like a ton of bricks. I wouldn't pay much attention to it. I think frustration, disappointment, hurt, pain, all were in that uh, that sound bite. Look, there, there's no way the Packers would do anything to jeopardize losing Aaron. The, you, you know, and unless Aaron just chooses to retire, which I I would be shocked. The guy's playing better now than he's ever played, and without him, you certainly wouldn't have been even close to where you were yesterday. And and I think the same would it will go for next year, and and it's really the the next few years if he chooses to play. I wouldn't buy, pay much attention to what he said. It's going up on a Tuesday. This convo is going to be personal for Stephen A. Smith, Max Kellerman, Marcus <coughs> Spears. Always good to see you. I'm Molly Karen Rose. Guys, you know exactly. Where I'm gonna go? Molly? Aaron Rodgers' predecessor, Brett Favre. Oh, go ahead, Stephen. Is that swag? Is that swag? In the goo? flesh. In, in the, the flesh. flesh. In the flesh. Yes. I don't know if y'all were watching NFL Live yesterday. I mean, they were talking some <laughs> blasphemy until I sat up there and tweeted, like, I'm watching you and Dan Olaski. I'm watching y'all. I'm just saying. Anytime. Any All right. time. All right. You know, Any goggles time. All three glasses of on. All right. You are, you are, don't, don't be calling out everybody. Be calling out everybody. I these glasses because last time, last time you made jokes about them. I think they fly, so I'm going to wear them. Oh, my goodness. Listen, Marcus, I'm there. on your team. It, I'm with you, not against you. They out the blue you. light, you know right? Ma, Ma you're the only one right, on guys. this panel I don't have to worry about. Everybody else switch up. I don't have Facts. to worry about you switching up. Facts. Consistent. I try to be. All right, guys, let's go here. Stephen A., I want to start with you. Uh, Aaron Rodgers' predecessor, Brett Favre, he's not buying it. He says there's no way the Packers aren't going to let him go and that, you know, Aaron's just kind of emotional. It's disappointment. All that kind of stuff is talking. Should we care what Brett Favre has to say on the subject? Not really. Not really, uh, because Brett Favre would have no idea what he's talking about with all due respect in regards to this, because he has not been Aaron Rodgers. If you recall, Brett Favre, a Super Bowl champion, one of the great quarterbacks who have ever lived, and actually a really, really nice guy, I'd like to add that as well. Brett Favre never had, never received the treatment that Aaron Rodgers has received. Brett Favre was playing with Reggie White and those boys. Brett Favre once had Sterling Sharp as his receiver, and by the way, for those out there who forget who Sterling Sharp was, excuse me, Randy Moss is the second greatest receiver of all time. Jerry Rice is obviously number one. We put people like Terrell Owens up in there, what have you. Sterling Sharp, go back and watch the videotapes. Go back and watch how this brother performed in Green Bay. If this brother hadn't had, I think it was his neck injury, if we're correct, neck if injury. I'm wrong, Marcus Spears. Sterling Sharp was one of the great, great receivers the game of football has ever seen. Brett Favre had that brother to throw to for a few years. Brett Favre had that guy, if I remember correctly, but he also had others, okay? In the end, Brett Favre was treated like a, a godlike figure in Green Bay. He could do no wrong, even with the media. We have people, even on this network, oh, look at Brett Favre jump into the arms of his offensive lineman. Oh, look at him sit up there and throw the ball under him. It's the kid in him. It's never left. I mean, the fawning by reporters, pundits, commentators all over the place. It was just nauseating to take. That kind of stuff, that kind of treatment that Brett Favre received, is completely the antithesis of what Aaron Rodgers has had to endure. Aaron Rodgers has been underappreciated. Aaron Rodgers has not received the respect and the deference from the and the deference from the Green Bay Packers organization that he deserves. And as a result, that is why Brett Favre, I say respectfully, in this particular situation, he wouldn't know what he's talking about because the level of frustration that Aaron Rodgers has had to endure playing and working for and starring for this organization, holding it on his shoulders, literally and figuratively. Brett Favre never had to deal with that level of disrespect. So he is right about the emotional aspect of, of Aaron Rodgers. But in terms of how palpable it can end up being, how significant it can end up being, I don't think that Brett Favre is really measuring this to the degree that it deserves. Aaron Rodgers ain't just frustrated in the moment. It's a long, ongoing thing with a level of respect, 
that he has warranted and deserved has not been granted to him. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if he sat up there and said, look, I don't want to be here any longer. There is literally not a person who ever lived who is in a better position to say, to comment on Aaron Rodgers than Brett Favre. Stephen A, Brett Favre was once upon a time in the exact same position as Aaron Rodgers. He's the longtime great quarterback, Super Bowl winning quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. They drafted his successor in, in, in Brett Favre's case in the first round at a time where he still had plenty left in the tank. Did, did Favre have great receivers? Yeah. Let's not understate just because the position they were drafted, who Rodgers has had, Jordy Nelson and Greg Jennings and, and, and Devontae Adams. These guys can ball, as could Favre, as could Rodgers. If, if you don't think that we should, there's any value in, in what Brett Favre is saying, to me, the only way that could be is if you think Favre is coming in with a real agenda. Like he's there to kind of down Aaron Rodgers or, or throw some shade or subtle shade at Rodgers. That doesn't seem to me to be what he's doing. He's a dude who was in that exact position once upon a time for, by the way, when you talk about America's team and you could say the Cowboys because of Tech Schramm and the PR job they've done or the New England Patriots because of all the success for all those years, I would say the Green Bay Packers are a great choice. Play in the middle of the country, the, the team of Vince Lombardi, the, you, you had just a handful of like great quarterbacks. They passed the torch one to another. They're owned by the town, basically. Like the, the, and, and so Favre has insight into that unique situation in a way no one else would into, into Aaron Rodgers' situation. I really value what Favre has to say here. And the other thing about Brett Favre is, as a commentator, for lack of a better word, he's got a little Charles Barkley in him. He's got a ton of credibility, and he says what he thinks. Even if it sounds kind of off the wall sometimes, he doesn't care because he knows what he's talking about. He was there for two decades. Uh, I think that Favre's commentary on Rodgers is extremely valuable. And if you look at what Rodgers just did, 13 games in a playoff win with the Packers. First year of a new head coach, learning the system, didn't look as great as he normally looks. Wins the MVP, looks as good or better than ever. Wins two playoff games, almost gets to the Super Bowl, now that he knows the new, the new, uh, uh, court, the new coach's system. I, I think when Favre says he's good where he is, he should stay. He knows what he's talking about. So what? Nobody care about what Brett Favre talking about. He has no idea what Aaron Rodgers is thinking and want to do. Aaron Rodgers just lost to a quarterback that left New England, went to Tampa Bay, and beat him in the NFC Championship. So there is a football element. He's one in four in NFC Championships. One in four. One Super Bowl over that career. So, look, Aaron Rodgers could look at this and say, look, I know Green Bay can be a good football team. I know that we've been where we've been, but we hadn't got to where I needed to get to in order to be in this conversation to be the greatest of all time. Number one, that's something you've said, Max Kellerman. The second thing is, Brett Favre, mm -hmm. if, might I add, went and played for the Minnesota Vikings. And I understand how that dynamic played out there at the end of his career, but nobody would have ever thought that that would happen. Nobody ever thought Tom Brady would leave. No, ever, nobody ever thought Joe Montana would leave. And I'm not talking about them being free agents or the end of their contract. They wanted something different. Could it be as simple as Aaron Rodgers has been there 16 years, giving you all he's had, and now he wants something new? He wants to go try to win a Super Bowl somewhere else? Could it be just that? Could it be of, to the points that Stephen A. made that they haven't really surrounded him with the type of talent? Look what Tampa did for Tom Brady this year. That's why they playing the Super Bowl in Tampa. Aaron Rodgers is looking at that. So, look, Seattle drafted DK Metcalf for Russell Wilson. All of this stuff that Aaron Rodgers has been watching from a football standpoint could weigh into this decision. But for me, listening that's, to that's him being really answer. reflectionary, to me, him being reflectionary, you're arguing, presser, and, can I finish? Can I finish, Marcus, Max? You're arguing, you're ar go ahead, sorry, sorry. You say,
And you giving validity to what Brett Favre said. You didn't make any wrong points about him knowing the knowing Green Bay, 